the worst thing I ever did for you in the environment? Yes. Oh, well, um, it has to do with methane. I, I passed gas once, uh, and um, I felt I felt bad. It's, it smells strange, too, because it turns out my gas smells like ozone. I don't know why. Like, so it smells like it's about to rain. <laughs> Welcome back this week for a very special episode of The Lab. I'm Daddy Clay. And I'm Daddy Brad. Today we're here on the lovely shores of Lady Bird Lake in downtown Austin, Texas to talk about the environment, climate change, and offsets. And you know the best thing you can do for the environment is to not have kids. But if you've already screwed that up, please, no more than two. Oops, too late for that. And if you give any credence at all to the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Global Climate Change, it's time to do something. Now we all grew up in a wonderful natural world, and we'd like our kids to do the same. But Al Gore has got us completely freaked out! Now what do we do? A good place to start is figuring out how much CO2 you produce. This is known as your carbon footprint. The average American produces 20 tons of the stuff each year. Now there are a number of websites out there that feature carbon footprint calculators. One of our favorites is this one, zerofootprint.com. We like this one because the interface is very intuitive, the questions are very specific, and it leads you to a detailed report of exactly which of your activities are producing the most carbon. One of the other features that distinguishes this site from others like it is that there are community features that allow you to share your goals and your tips along your way to that zero footprint. Several of the guys here at the Dad Labs took the zero footprint test. Let's find out who the real climate killer is. My uh, carbon footprint is um, 15.3 tons a year. 29. 29.7. I had a score of 16.2. It was negative three when I stopped. I really didn't sign up to be on camera. I think it's below average because um, I drive an economy car and my wife walks to work. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised how air travel kind of jacked things up. It was, um, I... I was helping the world more than using the world. I'm kind of, my family and I, we're kind of like an oak tree. I know the meat is not good for me, and it's not good for the earth. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna scale back the meat. I'm gonna do a uh, three-day work week. I'm better than Canada now that I offset myself. We tend to keep the window shut and and not use ceiling fans, which we have. And we have a house that has two stories and the air could ventilate pretty well if we were to open the right windows. I told myself I could do one or two nights a week uh, without the meat. No, it said, like, how you want to offset yourself? Like, right. No, no, no. We're just talking plant about a couple store. trees. Right. So I planted a couple trees and, I mean, I have to do it now, I guess. Uh, we have a vegetable oil, carbons and vegetable oil. And, um, yeah, that's, that's got to be the future. I leave my doors open a lot. With the air on. The thing is, we both like the meat, and so it's like one—it's like meat, one kind of meat or another every night. But why did it say? Do you want to offset yourself? Don, did you, I sent you instructions in the email? You—you you don't have to say. Fing. This summer we're flying to Portland, and we're going to buy some offsets in order to offset. You know, it's pork, or it's you know beef. Tenderloin. I mean, it's just a lot of meat. I did fly once, and uh, uh, I was life flighted, uh, but still I was opposed to it. Meat, 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 meat. It was, you know, tied to a tree, and, a, a, you know, the lumber guys, it was protest. Anyway, I was injured, life flighted out, and then I felt awful. Hmm. Is, that, is that a styrofoam cup you got there? No, it's a, it's a, a diet soda. To make up for it, I, I did plant a, a grove of aspens. Yeah, I, I did fly a and lot. And that creates a lot of CO2, right? I don't know. That was, what was in the do I know? What do I know? CO2 for what? I'm That's breathing what CO2. If you go to the Exxon building downtown, you'll see it out front. Uh, they hate it. They hate it because they hate, they hate uh, the world. Having kids and trying to cut emissions can be tough. You've got all these people that take all these different places, and safety is always a concern, so larger vehicles are tempting. We're minivan guys here at the Dad Labs, and while they don't guzzle gas like SUVs, they're not a Prius. So until the manufacturers come across with a 50 MPG minivan, 
we might consider buying offsets. Now here's how offsets work. You estimate the carbon creation of an activity, let's say driving, and you pay a company to offset that carbon creation, either through planting trees or through investing in alternative energy like wind farms or methane recapture. What exactly is methane recapture? This revolutionary device is a methane capture space heater that keeps the Dad Lab's offices nice and toasty. How's it feeling here, guys? Bye. <clears throat> Harnessing the power of dads for the future of our children. Bro, it's kind of chilly in here. Would you pull my finger? <laughs> Uh, actually methane recapture are these little tiny power plants that run off cow patties. Sweet! Say you're interested in purchasing some offsets. There are a number of vendors out there on the internet that'll do that for you. Now you might choose an activity. For me, I like to say, I want to offset my travel. All my air travel and all the mileage I put on both of my vehicles. Number of sites to do that. The first here is nativeenergy.com. And to offset all of my travel, both automotive and air, would cost me $240 a year. Zero Footprint that we were talking about before also will sell you offsets. That would be $210. Nice. A third one is TerraPass. To offset all of that travel for me would be $98.60 a year. Does it bother you that the prices are so different? A little bit. All of these companies have their offsets certified by third parties, and they're also very closely monitored by groups like Environmental Defense. So I feel pretty safe um, putting my money into these offsets. Now, I will say that I went ahead and went with TerraPass, um, not just because it's cheaper, but because they'll give me a sticker I can put on my car. Show those mamas and those big Range Rovers. You're destroying the environment, and I'm a good person. Yeah, nothing like saving the world for all the right reasons. See my sticker? Now, most agree that offsets are at best a temporary solution. There's no way we're going to buy ourselves out of global warming. But for the time being, you can think of it as a little self-imposed tax until we can figure out how to better manage our lives with kids with a little less impact. Now, if you do buy offsets or take other steps to reduce your carbon footprint, make sure that it's visible to your kids. One of the points here is that we begin both at home and in the wider world to begin leading by example again. That's all for us here at the Dad Labs. We'll see you next week. Dude, okay, I'm gonna buy a yurt. I'm gonna get a, a rickshaw. I'm gonna start using cloth diapers. Dude, are you composting at your desk? Yeah, Does it, you smell it? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, that's some muffaletta sandwich from the other day. That's raunchy. Yeah. Although it, it, is heating, it is heating the office nicely. Cold front's coming. You better eat some beans tonight. Methane baby. recapture. <laughs> we used to call it giving someone the Dutch oven. <laughs> It's so warm and stinky in the bed, <laughs> honey. <laughs>